Good evening. I'm Nicole Schaefer, Director of Professional Medical Programs for Care HHT. And I'm Phyllis Loveland, the Operations and Communications Manager for Cure HHT. And we'd like to welcome you to our virtual meetup, Cure HHT's new resource library. Before we start, I want to let you know that you can change the size of your shared screen on the GoToMeeting control panel in your top uh, of your screen. This virtual meetup will be recorded and will be available on the Cure HHT website in the resource library for future reference, so you can share it with your family members. We have muted um, all phones and microphones to eliminate background noise, but we encourage you to ask questions throughout the conversation by simply typing your question into the gray panel on your screen. So I'm gonna switch over to um, our website. So Cure HHT is the only patient advocacy organization in the world for HHT, which means we are your primary resource for COVID-19 updates as they relate to HHT, um, to HHT screening and treatment guidelines, relevant scientific uh, articles and brochures, educational events, and much more. First, I wanna to disclose to you that this new resource library was launched last night and there are still many items that need to be updated, changed, or added. So please bear with us um, over the next couple of weeks. But with that being said, we would still like your feedback as you begin to wander around the resource library. You may find something or make a suggestion that is not on our to-do list, um, but it's very important for improving the site. So I just want to let you know that we have changed quite a few things. In the new resource library, we removed outdated materials, including treatments that were obsolete. Um, we've kept some older articles where information is still relevant um, and the treatments are being conducted um, at the HHT centers. We've added over 200 new documents um, that include the most timely uh, information about HHT. And we have changed the imagery so that it's a very photocentric site and makes it easier to find what you're looking for. So as you hover over the news and resources tab on the Cure HHT website, you'll see resource library. Click on that. And you'll see the new landing page. Um, it's very simple. We have both patient resources, provider resources, or you can do an advanced search by topic. Let's start with the patient resources. On this page, at the top here, you'll see that you can still go to the advanced search. Um, and you can also look at quick topic access, which we'll, we'll look at in just a moment. But I just want to show you how we've changed this setup so that we have these um, very visual boxes that go through each topic area, anemia and iron deficiency, brain, drug therapy, gastrointestinal, genetics, heart, HHT in children, insurance, liver, lungs, mental health, newly diagnosed, nosebleeds, pregnancy and women's issues, skin, and useful links to outside organizations. So let's start by looking in one of these topic areas and we'll try anemia and iron deficiency. You'll see here that there are lots of related resources. And as you scroll down, they are in um, the order in which they have been published or entered into the system. So most current will be at the top, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the most relevant because older items can also be of great importance. 
So when you go through this, you'll see it'll tell you if it's scientific literature, if it's a policy statement, if it's a, a webinar, um, there are fact sheets, brochures, and lots of other information. So when you click on one of these boxes, it will take you to that particular resource. And you will then see it to be able to read or, or download at your pleasure. So if we go back, To the anemia page, you'll see on the right hand side that there are also related news. And this will include things like the coronavirus update page. Um, it may have a news article that in this case was posted by Stanford, um, may have a relevant recorded webinar may have a scientific publication or it may even have a blog post and if you're not familiar with those this is a great way to see what people are writing about um, in the HHT community on a variety of different topics that you can also search those topics by those blog posts. So it's a very interactive and integrated resource library connecting all elements Another way that you can search by topics is to click on patient topics. And when you do that, you'll see that every category that was listed in a, in a box is also listed on the side here. So if we were to go into, for instance, insurance, you'll see that we have some organizations that offer some um, resources regarding insurance. We have an article that's been written on insurance. Um, we have some guidelines regarding procedure codes that would be helpful for your insurance. And again, there are related news items on the side. And let's take one more look at an article here. If we go into lungs, again, we're seeing a webinar, um, both kind of generic being on the HHT scientific conference. So you can see current research in the area of uh, lung AVMs. There's also a recorded webinar specific to lung AVMs, um, as well as articles and scientific literature for lung AVMs. And again, related resources on the right hand side. And then one of the last areas that I wanted to just highlight is this useful links to outside organizations. And so this will provide to you some different organizations that offer services or resources to the HHT community. PubMed is um, a resource library of all medical publications um, that is organized by NIH and pretty much every um, published article would be found here. Um, but it also lists different um, services like patient flights, um, angel flight, uh, Medicare rights, the Ronald McDonald House. And then there's organizations that we're affiliated with that have um, some resources also for HHT patients. And those are all listed there as well. Uh, so Nicole, we had a few, um, we actually had a few people join us after you were already started. You want to just kind of go back and just show everybody how you get into the resource library from the beginning, again, just for our, our uh, late attendees? Sure. So if you are on the Cure HHT homepage and you go under News and Resources and Resource Library, It'll take you to the resource library landing page where you can either choose to look at patient resources, which we just went through, provider resources, which we'll do next, or to do an advanced search, which you'll go through uh, in just a moment. So if we click on provider resources, you'll see that the page looks very similar. Um, you can do an advanced search from here. 
Um, all of the topic areas are listed here in the boxes, as well as in the quick topic access. And just a few that I wanted to highlight that are a little different in the provider resources is we do have a source here for international guidelines for screening and treatment. And this lists the 2009 guidelines, as well as the three checklists that came out of that that you can provide to your physician on uh, brain AVMs, lung AVMs, and nosebleeds. And once the 2019 guidelines are published, which we anticipate at the end of July, um, they will be listed here as well. Another topic area that would be a hot topic for um, physicians that you may want to provide to your, uh, your physicians is nosebleeds or epistaxis. And so again, here there's gonna be a lot of scientific articles, um, public uh, policy statements on the use of Avastin and HHT, um, webinars, but a lot of scientific publications on the clinical studies and the use of different drug therapies, um, specifically as they might relate to uh, nosebleeds. And another topic area that there isn't a lot of literature on, um, but is one we get a lot of questions about is pregnancy and women's issues. And so again, we have the abstracts here from the scientific conference that will um, relate to those specific topics. We also have a recorded webinar on IVF and pre-implantation. We have an article that was written on pregnancy and HHT. Um, and so again, these are just good resources for um, your physician. There is also this topic area on the patient side and these resources um, exist there as well. So what I wanted to let you know is that the CureHHT resource library is not static. It is constantly changing and um, we will be adding relevant publications, brochures, awareness materials, as well as partnership organizations and services on a regular basis. And I just wanted to let you know that in both the patient and provider sections, you'll see that there is a topic called newly diagnosed or um, clinicians first seeing a patient uh, with HHT. And we noticed today that these resources listed in this section, there are some that shouldn't be there. There are some that are missing. We've already started to make some of those changes. So this is one of the first sections that we will be changing over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we also noticed that there are some website pages and archive materials that are appearing um, in some of these topic areas. And again, our website consultant will be addressing this um, in the near future as well. So what I wanna do now is I wanna pass this over to Phyllis so she can go through the um, search functions and show you how to find specific topic areas. So um, Nicole, can you see my screen now? or? I can. Okay, great. So welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to walk you through the advanced search. Um, so we're already here on the advanced search page, um, which you saw when Nicole was uh, on her page. Uh, she showed you the patient topics and provider topics page, but on the advanced research uh, page or the advanced, re yes, re advanced resource search, you can see, you can flip back to your patient topics page, um, which is very easy to do. And then you can go back and forth to your, you can, you know, uh, go back to your uh, advanced search. So you can um, flip flop between the two. And same thing here, you can click to your provider topics. There might've been something you wanted to look at and they're like, well, I can't find it here. I wanna do a more advanced search. So the options there. So you can go, you can toggle back and forth between the two. Um, so here we have the um, specific area where you want to search resources. So I'm going to put in 
um, one of the topics that's been coming up a lot about a drug called doxycycline. And some of you may very well know what that is. Um, so you're interested in finding out more about it and you know the word, you're not sure what type of resource it is or what type of information you want, but you're interested in finding out a little bit more. So you can just type in the word doxycycline over here. I'm gonna move this so I can see. Okay, and then you're gonna hit submit. And we're going to give a minute or so to filter through. And we're searching all types, all topics. Um, so it's not picking a particular resource type. It's just going to pull up anything that um, it can find in here. So here we have a couple. This is a nostril trial on doxycycline. Here's a clinical trial um, article. And again, these are dated. Uh, tells you, you know, when they were done. So that's a simple way to look. You can also, if you want to be more specific, you can look at your resource types. Um, and Nicole mentioned some of those um, previously. So we're going to reset and that clears everything out. And then it just brings up the last things that I was looking at on my browser. Um, so if you hit all topics, or I'm sorry, all types, it tells you the different uh, types of resources we have, and we have a number of different types. So here we have articles, um, which can be um, articles that came from maybe one of our Centers of Excellence physicians wrote. It could have come from one of our newsletters. It could be a news article, possibly. Um, and those are the types that you would see. And again, you'll see here, where over here, I'm over where you see this rose geranium old compound article, it tells you specifically what the resource type is in the year. So if you go down here, you'll see where it says scientific literature. We have brochures, which are materials a lot of times that we've either created in our marketing department or we've gotten from other um, organizations that have relevant information. A lot of them are downloadable. You can print them. Those are great to be able to give to your uh, physicians. So those are um, also in the resource library if you're looking for them. Sometimes we mail things like that out to our patients um, or we have them in our new patient packets that you might pick up from a center and you might say, oh, I, there was a great brochure in there and I'd like to give out some to my other family members. You can pop onto our website here in the resource library. Probably 99% of them are in here. Um, and then you can print them yourself and have additional copies if you need them. We also have our fact sheets, um, which again are created a lot of times by our marketing department and then are vetted by our physicians. Um, and a lot of them, we might have a fact sheet about nosebleeds. We might have a fact sheet about how to identify HHT or a fact sheet about genetics. Um, so again, those are great resources to give out to family and, and physicians that don't really know a whole lot about HHT. Uh, we have a fundraising fundraising resource, tells you a little bit about how to set up a fundraiser. If you're interested in doing a fundraiser for Cure HHT, or if you just simply wanna do one on your social media platforms, uh, Facebook, so forth, it gives you some ideas how to do that. Um, government, these are some of the ones that Nicole covered. Uh, this is where you would find information about Medicare and Medicaid. Um, and different things from the NIH or CDC, any of the government agencies, if we have resources from them, we try to provide uh, that, you know, that we can have on our website that are um, important for our HHG patients. Um, then we have guidelines, which Nicole mentioned, our new guidelines are coming out, yay, very soon, very soon, July, right, Nicole? Uh, July. Yeah, that's what yep. we're yep. hoping. I know. So that's, that's been a, a hot topic. You probably all saw that on the front page of our newsletter that just came out last week. So those will be posted in there. And then I think, Nicole, you wanna just mention about the, uh, there'll be a site for those as well for people to look at on our, on our site? Sure, so there will be um, a separate website specifically for the clinical guidelines. Um, it will uh, provide the guidelines as a whole uh, publication, but it'll also break it down into the individual topic areas. Um, there are six new topics um, for the guidelines in addition to the ones that were in the 2009 guidelines. 
And so um, our website will be linking to that website um, to give you a direct connection to the newest guidelines for screening and treatment um, internationally. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be great. Um, our next up is organization. Uh, these are again, Nicole mentioned earlier, um, NORD, um, the Pulmonary Hypertension Association, different organizations that uh, we partner with or work with um, in, in connection with HHT. So we have their resources here. Uh, patient tools, uh, this has been revamped. Uh, so there's a lot of new things in there. Again, uh, resources for you to use for your physicians or guidelines. It helps you. There's some nutrition facts in there and things like that. Uh, policy statements, some of those are geared towards more of our drug studies. Correct, Nicole? I think some of those, like I think I saw some in there for Zopinib and some of the other Yes, I think the primary one we have right now is Avastin, which is bevacizumab, and okay. its use in HHT. Uh, scientific literature, those are uh, many of the uh, scientific articles or papers that are written by our physicians and researchers and published, um, and those are going to be in your scientific literature section. And then we have video, um, any of the videos that you've seen on our social media platforms or videos like the more than a nosebleed video or other videos that are available uh, that would help understand HHT more are, are there. And um, one of the changes and updates that we're going to be doing, um, and Nicole had shown you all on the page um, on the right hand side, where there are, you have uh, your resources and then related resources, and there will be videos at the top of each of those pages or each of those subject matters that will help better understand what each of those topics are. So we're hoping to add those over the next couple of months um, and enhance that a little more. And then lastly is our webinar section, which um, any of the recorded webinars that we do, uh, just like this one this evening, uh, would be hosted in our webinar section. Um, so I'm going to pull up another, um, so I'm going to flip over here, the patient topics and provider topics. And again, just the same ones that you saw in that uh, outside of the advanced search, but here you can get a little more advanced if you know the topic and you want to get very specific. And then the same thing with the provider topics. There were those couple that were unique to the providers, so their list is a little bit longer. Uh, the clinician's first time seeing a patient and the international guidelines. Um, and then I, I think those are the two that are unique uh, to our provider list. So I'm going to go over here and we're going to, so for our patient topics, um, we're going to look at nosebleeds. And I'm going to type in the rose geranium oil because that's another one that we get a lot of requests about. Um, people want to know, is it effective? And how does it work? So here's a couple, two different articles. So this is a scientific piece. Actually, they both are. Um, and this is one that was done in 2013. And if you open it up, it gives you a little bit more here. It tells you um, where here you can view the resource, tells you who the authors are. Um, and then also it provides uh, the different uh, subcategories, uh, the tagging that the provider topic and the patient topics and tells you how old the article is. So if you click in here to the view the resource, um, it gives you a little overview of that. Um, and then if you go outside back to where we started, this is the Rose Geranium Oil Compound article. Then this one is available for public use. So we're gonna click here and here we can see the entire resource. And this gives you, this is the um, compounding record, tells you the uh, compound for creating the geranium uh, rose oil compound. So this is something you can print out and have for your pharmacist or your provider. So uh, I know that's a topic that a lot of people have been interested in. So those are some of the other resources in here. Um, again, we're just gonna go back into our advanced search. And we're gonna, when you're, done, you always want to make sure that you hit the reset button. Um, so that'll clear out. And then again, it'll it'll leave up some of the articles that we were looking at previously, but it clears out your uh, search bars and allows you to start over fresh and, and look at some new pieces. Um, 
that's all I have. I'm gonna pass it back over to Nicole. Okay, so um, do you see my resource library screen? I don't. Looking now. Do you see it now? I do now. Okay, great. Um, so we have um, we have a couple of questions. Um, the first question is, do patients and providers have the same resources um, available to them? Do you want to answer that or? Yes, so basically um, you are, you can go in the provider, so even if you're not a provider, you can go in the provider section and look. There may be articles that are a little more scientific in nature that are in, on the provider side, but you have access to those. So you can take, you can certainly flip flop and toggle between the two if there's something that you wanna look at that's a little bit more in depth. Um, so they're certainly available to both. Now, some of the scientific literature um, and on the healthcare provider side or the provider side, um, there's a few in there that do require subscriptions and some of our healthcare providers have those subscriptions through their or uh, facilities, um, through their hospitals. Um, so they may not be available for patients um, unless they paid for them, but the majority of the articles in there are available for you to search, to look at, um, to review, to print out. Um, but they are, they're just broken into those two separate groups. Um, but yes, you can access both links. Okay. And I would say that there is probably some overlap in the patient per, um, topic areas um, and the provider topic areas, but there are also some things that are unique to one or the other. Um, and so, um, I would definitely start with the search that is most reflective of you, whether you're a patient or a provider. But as Phyllis mentioned, um, you can easily um, view the items listed in that topic category um, in either list. Um, the next question is asking, are CurieHHT newsletters in the resource library? So we um, currently only keep the last two newsletters. Um, so the one that went out last week would be in there. And then the last one that went out um, late, late fall, early winter would be in there. So those two, we keep the two most current newsletters in our resource library. Okay. And do we find them, do, where would they be located? Um, they, well, uh, depending on keywords. So for instance, um, they could be in a number of places. So if let's say there's an article in a newsletter about anemia and you type in the word anemia, one of our newsletters may show up because it may contain an article about anemia. So they're um, categorized that way. So I would imagine that they would be under under resource types. They could be under a couple of different ones. They might be under articles um, because some of them are broken down that way. And you might want to see if you type in um, newsletter, Nicole, and search resources and see if it pops up there. And this might be an area that we're still um, working on as well. Yeah. Oh, so there what it I is. In. Yep. There's the Curie HHT newsletter. So um, you'll see that's that's the latest. So we don't have the latest one is probably not up yet, and but is probably up on the site. Um, we just sent it out, and it'll probably be it hasn't been tagged to be in the resource library yet. But that'll be the next one that'll go in there. So you'll be able to find both of those. Okay. Um, 
And in uh, the next question is asking about where the clinical guidelines can be found. So um, I would say here, either under resource type and guidelines. And if you didn't know exactly what they were called, and like Nicole said, you just typed in the word guidelines and hit submit, you didn't put anything in the search resources, it would mo most likely just pull it up. You wouldn't have to be super specific as to what it was called. Um, that would help right. you find. Right, and so these are providing some guidelines that are from other agencies as well, but this does also include the 2009 guidelines. Um, so, you know, looking under the resource type, you could put it into the search bar here, um, or I believe it's also, um, let's see, do a reset under the um, provider topics under international guidelines for screening, it would be there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a question asking about um, how a patient becomes part of an HHT study if they don't live in a city that has an HHT center and can't travel to one of those centers. And they were asking if that information could be found on the resource library. And the clinical trials are not located um, in the library. Um, if once there is a clinical trial and they publish their findings, that would be located in the research library. Um, but if you're looking to participate in a clinical study, you would go to our homepage under research, click on clinical trials, and um, and then any ongoing clinical trials that we have um, would be listed here. Um, and then if once you look at it, you can learn more about the study um, and it'll tell you uh, if you need to travel to the HHT Center um, and if so, how many times um, it, they might have a telemedicine option. Um, so the best thing to do is to look at the study, see if one's interesting to you, contact the PI that would be listed there. Um, so like in this case, there's one at UCLA and the University of Toronto. I'm sure that you have to go to one of those two locations. So this particular study wouldn't be available outside of one of these two HHT centers. Um, the other place you can look is under the, the clinicaltrials.gov. And when you look here, um, you can research under hereditary hemorrhagic tail injectasia. You can also look under HHT. You will get different um, results depending on what you type in there. But these will list all the clinical trials around the world that are going on in HHT and whether they've been completed or ongoing um, and everything that you would need to know about that. So. Um, thank you for that question. Um, but the clinical trials are not in the resource library, only the publications for them. So the next question um, is asking, um, why do the scientific conference summaries and publications appear on so many pages? Phyllis, would you like to take that? Yes, um, because most of them cover a wide range of topics and pretty much every single topic. So if someone goes in and they specifically only look in the anemia, um, you know, if they go in the anemia portal and they look in there, we wanna make sure that they're not missed because there may be something very key in that scientific conference um, section. So yes, that's the reason they're in all of them. They're pretty much in every one. I think they're not in, in insurance and newly diagnosed, but they're in all of the other topic matters, lungs, anemia, you know, nosebleeds, because all of those topics are covered at our scientific conference. Okay, great. Well, these were some great questions and we sure, we're sure that you're gonna have many, many more as you start to really wander around and, and explore the research resource library. Um, and so feel free to ask them um, as you come across them. So tonight we just want to um, say thank you for joining us. 
um, and um, attending tonight's virtual meetup. Um, we are all in this together. That is our um, hashtag for June Awareness Month, but it really is all year round 24 seven. And we just want you to know that we are here for you, the entire community of patients, families, healthcare providers and researchers, and that you have, can rely on us to provide the most current HHT resources. Um, as you can see, the resource library is a work in progress. So we hosted a, a presentation on this at noon today already discovered um, that there are some items that needed to be addressed. Some of those have been taken care of before tonight's presentation and um, others we know um, are on a to-do list. And so we just ask that you be patient with us, but we also want your feedback. Um, so you will receive a short survey after this presentation. Please take a few minutes to give us that feedback. Um, but even, like I said, after this presentation, you're gonna go and explore the website, um, explore the resource library. And when you come across things, email us at hhtinfo at curehht.org. Um, with your questions, your comments, and your suggestions, because as I said, we're here for you. These resources are for you, whether you're a patient, a healthcare provider, um, or even a researcher. And so we want to make sure that we're meeting uh, your needs. Um, and just remember that, as we mentioned, all previously recorded webinars can be found in the resource library. Um, our next webinar is Managing Stress and Emotional Hurdles in HHT. It will be presented by Dr. Abby Hughes, who's a rehabilitation psychologist and assistant professor at Johns Hopkins. She'll be giving that presentation next week on May 27th at 6 p.m. Um, so we don't want you to miss out on this very informative conversation, especially during the times that we live in currently. Um, and that registration will be online later this week. So again, I just wanna say thank you for joining us tonight. We really appreciate your participation and we hope that you enjoy the rest of your evening. Yes, Good night. Thank you. Good night.